Which indicator fits best of all for an entry determination? This subject is for a whole trading training course, because it's very vast. That is why we don't have one single correct answer, every trader has its own experience. As I've already mentioned, in general you need to answer several questions. The main one is identification of your trading style and, in fact, specific situations which you would prefer to avoid. For example, if you are the scalper, it's important for you to find the levels or areas where the price bounces quite frequently, but for a small distance. This is how the scalpers work. This is sufficient to catch up a short-term bounce for 2-5 ticks with a short stop and execute many trades of this type, but levels are required here in order to get a bounce. For example, the dynamic levels indicator, which builds dynamic levels in real time, could serve well for these purposes. Moreover, it could be built not only by volume, but also by delta, asks bits, and so on. In fact, we have a ready-made template for the Euro futures. With the help of this example, you can select a filter for other instruments. You need to visit the website, where you can find the download tab, which contains templates. You go there, and for example, this dynamic levels template can be good for scalping. You can also play a bit with the settings and check how the levels filtered by volume are built. If you are an intraday trader and try to take impulse trend movements which last for 1-3 hours, the most functional, in my opinion, would be the cluster analysis and the big trades and cluster search indicators in the 5-minute or 15-minute charts. It is very efficient method for identifying an intraday entry point, since these indicators would give you an idea about major volume inflows and about the buyers and sellers who got stuck in the market. You will also get the levels with which you may actively work during the day. And if your task, for example, is to catch up movements which last from one day to one week, you most probably will use an hourly or 30-minute chart. It is convenient to use the volume profile for such movements, because it shows the volume accumulation. The price reaction will help you to understand who moves whom into the loss area. And during such, let's say, serious period of time, which could last for several days, a big number of traders may get into a trap. Profiles could be used for such trading style. The margin zone indicator could be used as a basic instrument for identifying goals, in order to understand where the market may stop or reverse. It's also not a bad idea to analyze the price action with clusters in footprint over the cluster search indicator in the day charts, as a day candle has been forming long enough and its closure shows the result of the fight between buyers and sellers without the intraday noise, which means that all the noise is inside. We see the result in the form of the candle closure and the volume traded inside it. There's a saying, beginners open an hour and professionals close it. This saying could be also topical for a daily time frame, as the closure is very important in this context. Now we will consider an example of how it is possible to combine the day candle and cluster analysis. You see the cluster search settings on the screen. The filter of the volume and unification of three clusters for the indicator signal is set. These orange areas are the cluster search and here we need to unite each three levels. Also, the scale of 10 instead of 1 is set in the chart. The instrument is volatile and it's more convenient to analyze the price action with a scale, otherwise the candles might be huge. The places where there was a critical fight for the level are marked orange and our task is to try to identify the winner. We see that a strong volume of the upper part of the day range was formed in the point 1. There was a long dynamics at that moment. We just need to get confirmation of the buyer strength the next day, which means that if we move upward here, we perceive this level as support and buyer strength. However, we see that next day marked with number 2, the buyer lost. Now, the yellow area after this reaction served as the resistance. You can consider selling possibilities while testing it. The price tested this range the next two days, which means that the price got stuck after moving down and wasn't able to leave this range. There was a critical situation here. Three days and three efforts to go down and the price was constantly held from below. But in fact, our basic cluster in point 1 isn't broken, that is why the cells are still important. On the fourth day, the price breaks support levels and falls down. 
we see a big cluster in the point 4, but the day closure is bearish. In other words, this cluster for this moment could be considered as a stop in volume and not as a reverse one. The seller confirms his strength the next day, which means that this volume is broken and this area serves as the resistance. Now, the cells could be considered here. However, we push this level the next day and the reversal occurs. We see that this volume doesn't hold the market anymore. The price action dynamics has changed to the long one, so we have the bullish candles now. Volumes push us upward and this dynamics is clearly not in favor of the seller anymore. Now we need to realign and drop the selling variance. There was no immediate test of the yellow area here, but in two days we tested this cluster in a long volatile candle. If we look at the cluster analysis, we get the support area, but if we look at the price action, we still see the seller's strength. The dynamics is still short here. The volume in the candle was pushed through, and it's not in favor of the bias. So we have the equal score 1 to 1, price action for sales and cluster for buys. Now we have the level and price test and need just to wait for confirmation of the price action. The next day could become a long, but the candle closed under the volume again. That is, this level confirmed itself, and we tested it even deeper. We tried to move higher, but failed. That is why in this case we need to wait for the next day. Further, a new cluster is formed in point 5, and the situation becomes even more interesting. We see a reversal formation and correction here. However, while the seller still keeps the situation under control, we have a new level which could stop the further down movement of the price. However, the day still closes in the bearish manner, and the volume is stopping rather than the reversing at that moment. Only the next day, marked with 0.6, gives us one more area test, and we get the buys control after the closure. It means we have here all indications for looking for the buys. We have a cluster, the buys effort to take the situation under control, the strong day closure, the volume which pushed up. All these analysis factors give us understanding that the buys may continue. It depends on your trading strategy what you would do with this information. At this moment, you could look for some intraday buying patterns, since you might realize that the chances for buying and success are much better than for selling. This example showed how it's possible to analyze efficiently the market in the day charts without spending much time, since you need just to have a look at the chart once or twice a day. It should be sufficient to understand what variants could be interesting for you the next day. Of course, situations cannot always be that clear. We selected a situation which is clear for understanding the principle of the cluster analysis and price action. You should stay away from the market if the situation is not understandable and it's one of the most difficult tasks of any trader with such a trading style. To control yourself and do not do stupid things due to a strong wish to be in the market and trade all the time. That is why it's important to find this balance and control your emotions.